because I have five kids, sometimes I have problems with the name. Sometimes I call him uh, Ilhan or Irian, confused. And they say, Allah, daily, you call me name. <laughs> I have so many eyes. Like your mommy one eye, that's why. What's up, it's Sonia. Welcome to another episode of Men Explain. Thank you so much for your love, your support, your viewership. I hope that you've already subscribed. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. If you've been watching all of our shows and episodes, but you're not yet subscribed to us, do it right now. Why haven't you already done it? So we've addressed toxic masculinity before. What about the flip side? When it comes to healthy masculinity, are we raising the next generation of sons Right? We've got a really special duo. In fact, it's a father-son duo joining us today. First of its kind, I think. We've never had that on the show. I'll leave the introductions to them. Take it away. Hi, I'm Fandi. Hi, I'm Irian. <laughs> Your father the... and son. I was going to say, that was the shortest introduction <laughs> in the world. I mean, you guys need no introduction. You're only like one of the most famous families in Singapore. Are you used to hearing that yet? Yeah, yeah, quite often, always, and when we at dinner, especially with the whole family. But rarely we get a family dinner because most of the, the three boys are yeah. overseas and sometimes Iman also travel once in a while, but almost every month we go to uh, Nando's to have some food. Oh. And then that's where, you know, people are asking for a photograph to take, be taken. Oh. So sometimes we feel very shy as well. Really? <laughs> yeah. Funny, been, you, your entire life, you've you already know, been I, I'm pretty very famous. Shy person, actually. I mean, that's nice. You, you guys are like real-life Kardashians, you know. Like I mean, in Singapore, like, I'm sure. Like, <laughs> right? Like, super, super yeah. iconic. Okay, so today, we're talking a little bit about healthy masculinity. And I couldn't think of a more perfect duo because now in this day and age, and funny for you, you know, you've raised five kids. And it, I mean, that's incredible. Five kids. Yes. You learn something new every few True. years with yeah. every kid that comes along. Yeah. What, what do you feel uh, in, in this day and age? Yeah, the, having five kids is not easy, but we, uh, myself and Wendy, we have to work hard. Of course, we have a mate to help assist us. So it's very important. Uh, Wendy is very, very uh, firm and very strong, and she works very hard for the kids. But I'm just always outside, you know, working. Uh, traveling as well, but uh, when I'm back home, I always uh, take the kids out, play with them, you know, talk to them uh, about life. When they, even when they were young, when starting and they start kicking the ball, but I never, never really uh, force them to play uh, the sports yeah. because I think it runs in the family. Like uh, it does. Yeah, <laughs> because my my grandfather, my father, my uncle all represented Singapore for many years as well. Mm. Yeah, so I mean. The kids, especially like Irfan, is very tough because he's very tough boy, uh, very stubborn and very hard and very fierce yeah. looking. As for Iksan, he's uh, more jovial, playful, and Iman is the best because she's a little girl, very quiet <laughs> and very petite, you know. Mm. And she's, uh, I mean, everybody loves her in the family, all the boys also. <laughs> That's like Everybody yeah. loves Iman. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> the only one uh, guarded by, you know, four boys. That's the thing. Yeah. So I was actually, so I see Iman a lot at, okay. you know, events, work, and yeah. she's been on our show before yeah. when she released her first single. And I always wonder how it's like to be surrounded like so many boys in the family. Yeah. Like, all of you must be so protective of her, are you? I mean, even though you are the youngest. For me, not so much. Maybe the two, old, two older boys. Huh? Uh, so how's your relationship like with Iman then? Because you're mostly like you've got brothers. Yeah. Which we'll touch on in just a while. But how was your relationship with your sister? I disturb her, she disturbed me. <laughs> I sleep on her bed. Yeah. She plays games with me now. I think the bond is there now. I heard that she also plays a few pranks on you. Like, does she try to like draw stuff on your face no not anymore last not time anymore. yeah yeah last time <laughs> so why did she stop i don't know you guys maybe i up. get too annoyed already oh annoyed. I see. it's hard to see or envision him annoyed he looks so chill is this okay i need to clarify now honey. like come on you gotta tell me man like he can be very fierce really yeah, yeah. especially with the brothers i see especially with irfan i think tell me about a, a little story there yeah they always fight in the room 
Oh. Yeah, you know, and when he's angry, he's mad. He gotta fight his big brother. Wow. <laughs> Most times, yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, of course, that's all you know between siblings. It's it's yeah. fun and games sometimes. But when you look at your brothers, do you look at them and you know you're very inspired or motivated to adopt some of their good habits? Um, inspired by them. Yeah. As they are playing professional now, I want to, I want to be be like them and play at the top football. Which I'm sure you're on the way there. I heard he trains how many times? Yes, twice a day. Twice a day. That's a big commitment, right? Yeah. yeah. When you were growing up versus, yeah. say, bringing your sons and your whole family up, what is the biggest difference? Like, were you told last time, don't do this because that's not man enough or yeah. don't do not do that because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be the man of the family. Like, were you ever yeah. had those things instilled in you? Yeah, definitely. In our time, it's different. It's it's all about toughness. I used to sell nasi lemak. I used to do a lot of things to build my own bicycle. It's all up to you because your parents say I give you freedom, but they are very strict as well. So that's how I learned. And then we are the old school, but we know what we can do, what we can't do. So we are specialized on our creativity mm. because we build a lot of things that Today, they just buy, you see? Yeah. Especially like bicycle, like I said. I used to build my own bicycle. I can't imagine that, but that, that's and incredible. I, and I used to help my grandparents work. It's important for, for the new generation, especially like Kim. They must learn to be independent, yeah. to learn not uh, depend on the parents. Because, uh, you know, as you grow older, you have to be smarter. And I, when I was young, I already was quite good in dealing with people. Hmm. And when you go into... Uh, new sp space, new area, or a football team, you need to show yourself if you want to be known, you mm. want to be heard, and you must always express yourself. Because now the new generation I've seen, I'm, I'm coaching a few clubs already. So like now, for instance, now I'm in Kuantan. The local boys, when you ask questions, they won't answer. Really? Everything is okay. Everything is okay. See, they still don't express what they want to know, the opinion we want to know. But the kids now, I think, are more open. But sometimes they're too open and too, uh, sometimes what you call that? Mm, aggressive? Too aggressive, aggressive, correct. So so this is where we, uh, family, um, must teach them. Because for me, since young, the most important thing as a family, you must be respectful mm. to your uh, siblings, to your teachers, your coaches, your friends. This is very important because I use uh, I told them about my three Ds why I succeed in the football. Three even Ds, though, did you yeah, say? Three Ds, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Discipline, what are they? determination, dedication, and the small S is sacrifice because mm. you have to do all this because you must have a character to show that you want to achieve your dream and never give up. I never give up, and I promise myself when I get into the national team, I make sure that I won't be a reserve. Until wow, I retire. Okay. So that is, uh, you know, you have to work at it because yeah. you have to push. And the kids are following my footsteps. It's, it's very good. I never force them to play football. Uh, but one day, the two, the two boys, Ifan and Iksan, uh, came to me and said they want to play football professionally. So that's people. the S, the sacrifice. Yes. You can't be away. Yeah. I mean, you can't be physically around your family yes. a yeah. lot. Yeah. Which, which Arian, you grew up actually mostly in Singapore. Yes. And do you feel like that has shaped you in a way that you're, you're grateful that you managed to spend time, more time with your family? I also want to, to be like my brothers mm. so I can pursue my dreams. Yeah, but then in that case, you know, you also learn a lot when you live overseas, I'm yeah. sure, right? So when your brothers did that, like what would you say was the biggest change for them? Maybe they more mature so they grow up a lot faster yeah, I would yeah. Say, right yeah but i like what you brought up earlier funny about um respect and you know just being a good person yeah. to show that you are also a good man because sometimes i feel you know we, we talked previously about toxic masculinity when people always look at um each other maybe like oh i have to be a certain way to be considered like a manly man or like I have to look a certain way or be built a certain way or act a certain way, be alpha, be very dominating and all that. True. And those can turn very negatively after a while. True. I believe yeah. so. To be a man, a good man, a good person, it's important you have that character to be a gentleman. Mm. I think that's the most important. And I think you, you show good example and very polite and honest uh, to yourself and to the people, uh, to your spouse, to your family. 
uh, which is I think is important. It doesn't mean you have a big muscle, you are strong. Yeah. People that, that I mean, some people, some ladies, some girls, they like big bodies. Maybe they'll be into it. I don't yeah, know. but yeah. but that's the recent current uh, situation. It's like that. I see everybody wants to have a good body to tackle this lady. Right. <laughs> Something is. I see I it on know. TV sometimes. Yeah. I'm just gonna be real. I've never been one to look at a guy and go like. Damn, those are nice muscles. I'm going to go ask him out. Yeah, but I mean, you don't have to have big muscle, but the most important thing, you must be intelligent, yeah. smart, gentleman, like I say. But then uh, be honest and take care of everything, put the family out, what the wife needed. Mm. So it's important that, that we share what we have and we don't have to o or show people what we have as well. But do you think you expect that of your sons? I, I hope they learn through the years they have traveled and because uh, myself uh, always give them advice yeah. to be humble and you won't stumble. Mm -hmm. Even though you stumble, there's always people around you that will carry you up and help you. That's, I believe, because it happens to me many yeah. times. So, Aaron, I saw you chuckling a little bit earlier. Do you have any stories you want to share about your dad or like lessons that he has taught you? Be respectful to your people that you know. And just be kind, I guess, yeah, to be, be kind, kind to general, people. Right? Yeah, I can see that. I, I think you did a great job, like, you know, p passing this down to your sons yeah. as well. So hopefully the gentlemanly behaviour will continue. So I don't have any siblings. Um, right. uh, but, you know, the way I was raised was more of a very protective environment because I'm the only kid, I'm the only child, I'm a daughter, right? Yeah. So generally my parents are like, my dad is like a hound. Like, he would chase anyone away so to the point where like, I don't know if you can relate with Iman maybe, like if any boys came to talk to me in Bali when I started going to co-ed school, he'd be like, judging them like from a distance to the point where I think my male friends were scared to even like send me home or drop me home. <laughs> Do you feel like you're ultra protective? Uh, yes, especially for Iman. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Especially for girls, especially, yeah. Because they, uh, you know, very fragile. So really? Okay, yeah, yeah, wait, I want to yeah, touch yeah. on that. So, yeah, so there's yeah. a perception that girls um, are a bit more fragile. Or but those days, like, you know, it's different now. Uh, girls are coming out, present themselves, mm -hmm. and more willing to come forward, you know, which is very good. Aside from football, I mean, of course, your family is very, you know, known for your athletic abilities. And Iman also, she's, you know, a budding singer and she's coming up really strong in the industry, which we're all very proud of her always. I'm just curious, aside from football, were there other hobbies that you may have had when you were younger? Uh, I played rugby for two years. So it's still sports related? Yeah, sports related. Anything else like an instrument or cooking or uh, maybe are your other siblings you can let me know also yeah, I like to cook and what's your specialty dish wait dad answer <laughs> first I want the dad to answer first so let's let's hear whether it aligns what's the best yeah? <laughs> you always cook right? you, for yourself for us yeah salmon salmon and rice salmon and rice yeah. would you agree that the salmon yeah, is good we like okay. salmon and sometimes pasta it does yeah. everything for us so, so in that sense, you know, cooking is somewhat a hobby, right? Yeah. What if, and this is just a what yeah. if question, Fandi, like what if any one of your sons came up to you and said, I want to be a baker or I want to be a chef or I want to knit professionally, what would you say to that? Like, oh. is it considered okay or is it not masculine enough? It, it's okay. It's okay because Il, Il, Iksan actually wanted before to say, he said, maybe one day I want to be a chef. Really? Yeah, earlier on, yeah. But now, I don't know, he became footballer. I don't know whether he still have that dream to do it. Right. Because he can cook. And I, I just want to ask you something. Yeah, Is ask me, go ahead. What do you see in a man? What do I see in a man? Because you're uh, the only child. Yes, and, yes. And like, what do I compare to, right? Yes. Like, what's my reference point? Yeah. That's a really good question. Um, so, my, I have a very close relationship with my parents. Cool. Um, and I share, like, 98% of things with them. The 2% sometimes, like, not safe for sharing, but like I'll share with my friends. <laughs> Only two percent. Only two. Okay, maybe five or ten. I don't know. Depends. Is my mom watching? Okay, <laughs> she probably is. Anyway, um, I think my point of reference is really my dad. So he is. He's an outstanding man. You know, very like you said. I think respectful. He's he's a very steady guy, who's reliable. Um, definitely carries himself with a lot of you know respect and dignity and confidence as well. And I always saw that as a reference point. 
And I think subconsciously or consciously, I don't know, I also look for that, like, in a partner. I want mm. someone who's steady, reliable. All right. um, and he always says this, he always says, if a guy doesn't offer to come pick you up and like make sure they're home safe, I don't think yeah. he's the right guy for you. Because he would definitely do that for my mom, you know? And I think he was quite a stud like, last time, I'll just say. <laughs> I think he was quite a stud. He could have been quite popular with the girls, but do you agree with what yeah. my dad said? Yeah, it, it's true. Yeah. Now, modern day especially, you know, uh, our time is different. Eh? Shall, yeah, so yeah, shall we meet at this bus stop? <laughs> I know, yeah. Which is cute also, which is cute. Yeah. For you, like, do your sons then talk to you about this stuff, like relationships? Do they open up, you they know? They don't really open up. They don't? Yeah. Okay. But Why I, do you think I, that I, is? I talk a lot with uh, Ilhan, actually, mm. because he likes to ask questions. Lots, all kinds of questions. Yeah. I mean, I think sometimes sharing about certain things like relationship stuff or maybe yeah. a bit difficult for us as children to share yeah. like with our parents. Like, yeah. I also took a while to get there, you know. Um, but you were chuckling then. He was smiling the entire time. I don't know if you noticed. But I was yeah. like, I don't know if the siblings have secrets. I'm not sure. <laughs> Speaking of sharing emotions yeah. and, you know, personal moments and all that. Arian, have you ever cried in front of your dad? Or your yeah, dad? I have because yeah. of my, my exam. And what was your reaction? When you I just tried to console him because uh, I understand his situation. Because when he was in primary and secondary school, he ran uh, the exam. He has a teacher, a, a, a reader for him. And sometimes not enough time for him. So mm. that's why I think he failed. So I understand. I say, don't worry. Time, you're still young. You're growing. So you must keep on working mm. very hard, study hard, try to, you know, catch up with others. Uh, so don't worry about failure because that's just the beginning. So yeah. in in that sense, like, do your other kids also find themselves in a situation where they uh, break down in front of you, or have you seen that happen uh, aside from this incident? Yeah, but uh, not only about studies, but mainly about life. Because mm -hmm. I told them, if you really want to be a footballer, you have to sacrifice. I tell them, and I told them very seriously because. This is no playing fool because mm. you need to go overseas. We need to spend money. Yeah, it's an know? investment for you guys yeah, too. Yeah, because we need to spend money to pay. But sometimes we are lucky also we get some sponsorship. Mm. So important. But I say you don't waste your time playing football and not wanting to study. So you give up everything. But life, you cannot give up everything. You must keep. You must have education. And you must have your whatever you want to do. Your love is football. Mm. You must follow your dream. And I know like Iksan a few times play a fool, you know. <laughs> so I always advise him, but he listen. And, and sometimes he, he said I cry uh, because when I talk to him about life, how I struggle, I struggle uh, since young and how I grew up, you know. My advice to them is do what's best for you and for the family and you will achieve your dream by not giving up in life, even if you fail. Mm. So they, they are, are so far, they are very okay. And that is okay to be vulnerable because I, I mean, I cried in front of my mom quite a bit last time with problems. If I cry in front of my dad, it must be a real big ass problem. It must be <laughs> a real big one because he's the problem solver. Like he will know what to do. But I don't want to bog him down with it until I know that I really cannot solve it. Then my dad knows what to do. I mean, you talk about Iman. Iman was a sprinter before. Oh, really? She went was to she? Uh, what's Singapore Sports School. Mm. And she also played football. Uh, we were shocked. She became a singer and a photo model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. But maybe from her mom. Yeah, for yeah. sure. They are so, also quite... They, they are yeah. spitting image of each other. So yeah. quite, quite insane. But what if she wanted to pursue football as a career as well? Would you have said like... Mm, I'm not sure because you know would, she's a I would give her a good advice. Which is? Because uh, her size doesn't suit. <laughs> really? <laughs> because oh, she's, quite she, petite. she's petite, yeah. yeah, but because football is very tough. You need we to can be tough too, okay? I'm just yeah, gonna say I mean, I mean, you're small tough, girls. But, <laughs> but when you get kicked, that's, that's different true. thing. So you need a lot of protection on the field and yeah. you have to be really, really strong uh, and mentally strong. Physically and mentally must be very strong. I like that you brought that up because that was the next thing I wanted to talk about. You know, um, I, I think it's easy for you to bring this up because of sportsmanship. And I think yeah. the, the environment that everyone has grown up in with sports is good because 
for a non-athletes, I think a lot of valuable lessons are actually learned in sports and team mm. sports as yeah, well. Yeah, true. Um, you talk about mental fortitude and mental yes. strength. So can we touch on that a little bit more? Because physical strength, yes, we know yeah. about that. Something attractive about men would also be the fact that they're able to open up, they're able to communicate, yes. have conversations about feelings and, and yeah. thoughts. I think that's an attractive feature. So how would you say you built that mental strength over the years and how do you then um, hand that down to your sons to show the importance? It's not always about the skill. It's always about the will. Mm. People forget. They think the skill can win them game. It cannot. It's the mental fortitude as it's well. It's the will, yeah. It's yeah. the will is always there. Right. Every day I talk to these boys. Yeah. So never <laughs> give up. Never give up. Yeah, in life the same. I just always wondered because I didn't grow up, you know, in an athletic background. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of like, you know, locker room talk or oh, yeah. uh, pitch talk? Yeah. I don't know what you call it. Locker yeah. room talk? I don't know. Yeah. That really can break you, right? I'm sure. Or definitely. is it dramatized in movies? De definitely. It's true. Let's say now I'm a coach and these are all my players. Yeah. When they are playing the first half, I don't like the way they play because uh, the opponent are dominating the game. So yeah. second half, I will come in, I will bang the board. Really? Ah, you are better work out. So I have to wake them because wow. sometimes they just switch off, you know? Yeah. So because, uh, you know, life is about challenges. There's no life if there's no challenges. You must be able to uh, achieve your dream with all the challenges. You not only uh, you want victory and you know happiness, it's not. Life every day is changes. So we have to say on the field the same. I just wonder like, is the communication style different now compared to last time? Like, do you get shouted at a lot? Yeah. <laughs> you do, Same really? In changing room, oh. if you don't perform, also the coach will shout or yeah. shout our teammates. But I just wonder whether that breeds any, like, toxicity in, you know, like... In the team? In the team, yeah. Like, how do people deal with it? Tough. Physically, mentally. Because if you, the coach see you very soft... Oh, you, you can't know, take you, it. You can't take it, the criticism, that means you are soft, that means you no chance to be in the team. But do you think that if we approached it differently, like with yes. a coach that had more empathy yes. or communicate in a more calm manner, yeah. or I wouldn't say feminine, but in a, you know, girls are known to be a little bit more empathetic or yeah, compassionate. Do you think if they added a touch of that in, would I that agree. be more effective? I agree. Yeah. But sometimes I also disagree. When you pamper them too much, <laughs> you cannot grow. Mm. They must learn how to be tough because in our days, we have to be on our own. Mm. The coach will tell you, come, play, run. They don't talk about any discipline. Your feelings. You, or <laughs> yeah, they just want to see you can play or not play. See, but the problem is now the, the current situation and the generation. Uh, the coaches always look for a player with two, three uh, roles that they can play. Okay. Now the players, when the coach say you can play right back, no, I can only play right wing. Mm. So mm. that means you see he show some weakness in him yeah. already. Sometimes the coaches they will ask and test the player. Can you try play, this? Try this? No, I cannot. Say, can you play on the right back? He say cannot. Okay, then you sit down and you won't play because I I'll try to play you in the team, but you don't want to play in our time. You can play a right back, left back, goalkeeper. Also, we want to play. Oh. You see, the difference is the mental. We want to play. We don't want to be reserved. But why you want to be reserved? It's a mindset. It's a mindset. So yeah. we have to change our mentality to become tough. So some, some, you know, coaches are like that. Mm. I'm like that. Mm. I always say, hey, you can play this man. You don't want to try? I cannot. Okay, then. Then we know he don't have that will to fight. Oh, okay. and he's scared of failure because it doesn't mean that he don't, don't play in that position. He cannot try. So he the, should try. The question is: being afraid of failure does that make you any less of a man? I'm curious. Not really into sports, mm. yeah, but uh, in life, yes. So, what do you feel about that? Like, are you personally scared of failure? No, uh, not really, because I will just learn from the mistakes I did. That's good. Yeah. Like, I think that's great. Because for me, I always thought that, I always thought of myself as a perfectionist. And people always say like, oh yeah, you know, um, if you're trying to fine tune certain things, you're too much of a perfectionist. But I realized that I'm afraid of failure. I think that's what I'm actually afraid of at the end of the day. Not so much about wanting to release something that's perfect. I'm just afraid that it will flop. And that 
that is just that's just my own thoughts, I guess. So I don't know whether it's the same as in sports. If as you well. want to be perfect, uh, yeah. the best way for you is uh, the best way to predict the future is you have to create yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to be there and create it yourself, and you know that whatever it is, you have to achieve that dream. You fail one time, you never give up. That's all. You must keep carry on and fight for that. Yeah, and I think that's another attractive trait in a man as well, if you're talking about what is more masculine, right? You have to sacrifice a lot. The yeah. training, the mental torture. I never in my mind want to give up because I know my I want to pursue my dream. Mm. So you don't give up. You give up. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be there. He'll be there looking. I'll, I'll pick you up. Thank you so much for bringing that in because I see so many... Um, lessons that have been learned not just through you and your upbringing but also how you brought up your entire family and also the whole aspect of team sports and how that also teaches you a lot yes. um, anything that you want to share with the audience to wrap up today's episode don't give up on your dreams yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say follow me on social media no <laughs> Oh, we will follow you. And also, but and also we that... We can drive you if you want. Oh, yeah, right? Oh, my gosh. That'll be so funny. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all this with us here today. And Thank you. And also for, you know, sharing some little snippets into your life and your siblings. And all the best. We're rooting for you. you. And looking forward to see what's in store. Anything else you would like to add, Fandi? We are simple family, actually. We don't be like Beckham or what, because we are normal people. I Seriously, because, you know, people uh, praise you for what you have done. But I, I think it's not about me. It's, like I said, uh, just stay humble mm. and you won't stumble. Yeah, so. Stay humble and you won't stumble. That needs to be on our sticker pack this year. <laughs> we are printing it, by the way. Thank you so much. Right, and also, you. I don't mean to be like weird people in the public, but we definitely have to take a picture later. Because this is not... <laughs> <laughs> my, the crew is like laughing at me. We are definitely yeah. taking a picture later. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for listening, tuning into this episode of Men Explain. Please hit the follow button if you haven't already subscribed to us. And on top of that, follow us on all social media platforms at itsclarity.co. If you've got any questions, leave it down in the comments below. See you next time. Yes. Bye.